the YouTube this rod. This is what the weather's been like lately since I got the new camera, so I haven't really had a chance to really do a, a vlog or vlog as some people call it from the bike. Uh, Apparently we're in the middle of Nova's flood, uh, or at least when I have time off, that's what it's like. Time for myself to do something, it's raining. Anyway, this is sort of a, a video response to uh, Two Balls Per Bike from uh, back in August when he was talking about e-bikes and e-bikers. Back then, he said something about, he figured there were only two reasons to buy an e-bike instead of, instead of a motorcycle. Uh, reason number one being that you were just too damn stupid to uh, pass the test and get your M1 and get out on the road with a, a motorcycle. And reason number two being you were just too damn lazy to pedal a bike. I bought an e-bike in summer of 08, so that's getting close to uh, close to three years ago now. And neither one of those was a reason. I mean, yes, I didn't want to pedal a bike, uh, but not because I was too lazy. But uh, part of the reason that we bought the bike was for me to commute to work. It was a cheap second vehicle. At the, at the time, uh, we needed a second vehicle that fit a, a couple of different criteria. My wife, who was my fiance at the time, uh, didn't have a driver's license at all. She had, because of this uh, graduated licensing, she had started a graduated license in one province and then moved to a different province and they said, well, you don't have the full G, you start over. At the time, she didn't have access to a car and didn't really uh, have much need for one. She didn't bother. Um, then when she was uh, moving in with me and I have a Jeep, we figured we needed a second vehicle and the whole no license, no insurance thing actually did play into it a bit because it meant that it was very, very easy to give her something that was a little bit quicker than waiting for a bus um, so that she could get to doctor and dentist appointments and do a quick run to the grocery store or other errands that uh, needed to be done throughout the day. And then, uh, when she did get her, when she did get her G2, um, I left the Jeep with her in the day, and I would commute into work with the bike. Now my drive to work is only about nine and a half, ten kilometers, so an e-bike fits the bill pretty nicely. That means that I charge the battery at night, and it's good all day for what I need it to do. It doesn't increase my commute for, by very much. Only 10-15 minutes, because before with the Jeep it would have been a 15-20 to 20 minute drive. With the bike it's a half hour ride. so it doesn't increase the commute all that much. So, the other thing that uh, Two Balls mentioned in that, uh, in that video back in August was uh, how he didn't think that uh, e-bikers were as responsible citizens of the road as uh, standard pedal cyclists. 
that hasn't been my experience out here in the suburbs, but uh, maybe things are a little bit different downtown. Uh, Two Balls is from Toronto, uh, so he's kind of a neighbor of mine. I'm just out in Oshawa, so 45 minute drive maybe. Uh, But yeah, things out here are a little bit different, but then most of the people I know who own e-bikes out here bought them during the, uh, bought them during the Ontario government uh, pilot project a few years back, before they had really solidified the laws, and uh, I think people just learned to really know the laws before they even got on the bike because they didn't want the bike to be taken away from them. Uh, and the fines for breaking the rules back then were substantially higher because, uh, I mean, riding with no helmet at the time during the pilot project was a $3,000 fine, I think. Uh, now it's more like 80 bucks, which is a little bit more realistic, but because it was just a pilot project, they had special fines. I must look really strange sitting here talking to myself. Uh, so I paused a bit while the uh, neighbor was going into his house, or his office building, I guess it is. Anyway, so yeah, that, that's the story around here. Now, during that pilot project, I was probably sort of the odd man out, willing to accept whatever way the government decided to go. If they wanted to treat it like a, a moped or an LSM, a uh, low-speed motorcycle, and make you get a, an M license with limited speed restrictions on it, then I was willing to do that. Uh, not everybody who who bought into the e-bikes at the time was willing to pay those extra costs for licensing and plates, and plate stickers and whatnot, and insurance. It was something I was willing to do because it still would be cheaper than a car, although if that were the way it went, I probably would have traded up to a, a more powerful bike a lot sooner. As it is, I don't have any plans in the immediate future, but if we move and my commute becomes longer than what it is right now, I would probably consider at least like a, a full speed scooter or maybe a, a full speed highway bike. Um, not that I would be driving on the highway because that would just absolutely terrify me. Uh, but you know, something in the about the power range of a 125 to 250cc motorcycle, preferably electric again, uh, uh, so like a zero motorcycle or uh, what's the other one called the Bramo, something like that. Because uh, I really like electric vehicles. My next car is probably going to be a plug-in hybrid, so they can run off of electricity for all the short runs and only has to kick into gas when you really need it. But that's just me. I mean, I'm a bit of an eco-freak. My house is all compact fluorescent light bulbs and other power-saving gadgets that uh, most people haven't switched over to yet. I mean, to some limited extent, but most people haven't gone as full out as I have. Uh, that's just part of who I am. Anyway, I think that's about enough of me sitting at a table talking at the camera. Hopefully, uh, as the week goes on, we'll have some less rainy days and I'll be able to actually get out on the bike and do some real vlogging. Anyway, talk to you later, YouTube.